It will be a killer and a chiller and a thriller when I get the gorilla in Manila. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cassius Marcellus Clay. He's young, he's handsome, they know it. I can pound the drink of water and kill a dead tree. Don't mess with Mohammed Ali. I've done something special. I've wrestled with an alligator. I've tussled with a whale. I've a handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. I'm as confident as I say, and I'm better than I say. What's up, everybody? It's Captain Mike M. Welcome to episode 153 of the Gamers in Beta podcast. Uh, Today I'm celebrating 12 years married to my lovely wife, but more importantly, we've been together almost 18 years, and she is the one who has started me back into gaming back when the Xbox OG came out. So I'm going to raise my glass to my wife tonight, who I love very much. Uh, Joining me tonight is... That's Jay, and uh, it's been an interesting week for me. Uh, as you all know, I've been buying processors, and uh, well, a processor for my computer and whatnot, and AMD uh, comes out and says that uh, they're finally releasing the new ones, so now I'm only a step behind again. <laughs> <laughs> and who else is with us tonight? You won't believe why Joe State broke his promise to himself and ended up playing Overwatch. Click here to find out more. <laughs> what? <the? laughs> so I guess we'll hear about that later on. Well, I'm confused. I can't uh, find the button to click on. It's only going to take you uh, to a page with uh, overlays that are going to play, even though you don't want them to. Oh, sweet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so Corey is missing tonight. I believe he might be missing for a good portion of the month. I could be incorrect with that. He is uh, moving, so I think he's uh, in the midst of that, packing, unpacking, all that good stuff. So he will be missed, and of course, I told him last week that because he was rolling out the new soundboard, that any subsequent show is going to sound like you know a poor man's imitation. So of course, that's what's going on immediately after he rolls out the new soundboard. So we will get by. Uh, all good responses, though. People do seem to like the, uh, the soundboard in the new segment, so we will try to keep the momentum going. Uh, not too much news this week, fellas. It's uh, l- you know leading up to E3, so it's the calm before the storm. But looking at some releases that are coming out this week, a few have caught my eye. Uh, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. That's coming out from EA, and you can actually play that right now on EA Access on either PC or Xbox um, One, and that will give you, I believe, about six hours of gameplay. So if you want to try that out before you buy it, you can do that. Do you know if that uh, lasts even after it comes out, or is that only pre-release? I am not sure. I want to say it's just pre-release. I thought I spread somewhere that that is good until June 7th, Uh, but I could totally be wrong with that. I will download it tonight because I do want to check it out. It's not on my radar, right. but I want to check it out. Uh, Steam World Heist is coming out this week on PlayStation and, I believe, PC. So this is a game that we have seen a couple times now at PAX. It's a uh, tactical shooter, um, a little bit like XCOM, but um, it's got a different spin on it. If you're into the Steam World games, like Steam World Dig, it's going to have a lot of uh, you know familiar look and feel to it. So check that out. Want. And then, um, lastly, Dangerous Golf is uh, out. It came out, I believe, on Friday, and this game was made by some of the devs who worked on the Burnout series. And the reason I bring this up is Jay was a big uh, Burnout fan. Hell yeah. And I I guess this game is pretty much built upon the mode of that, what's that, Crash Mode? Crash Mode, which was my favorite mode, but it sounds weird. I really didn't have it on my uh, my radar, but I'm kind of interested now, and I may go in and pick it up, just uh, because I am hearing it is very much like that Crash thing, but you're golfing <laughs> right and, but it's not like on a golf course it's like you're 
like golfing in weird places. Yep. It looks like from the screenshots, like in mm-hmm. like in a house or something like that, or a factory. Yeah, a large uh, a large dining area and like a castle. So there's a bunch of like expensive dinnerware, and you've got to create as like much destruction as possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, we didn't mention the free games for June, the uh, last show, so let's uh, tackle those right now in case people are wondering. We'll go with the PlayStation Plus games first. Um, let's see. For PS4, we have NBA 2K16, Gone Home Console Edition. For the PS3, we have Echo Chrome and Siren Blood Curse, Episodes 1 through 12. And for the Vita, we have God of War, Chains of Olympus, and Little Deviants. Here's a question for you. Either one of you played the God of War, Chains of Olympus for the Vita, because uh, I'm interested. No, but I've heard good things about the other God of War that's on uh, that's on the Vita. Wasn't that uh, free or on sale recently in one of those like under like $5 sales? I, I don't know. I'd have to wipe the dust off Flash my Vita sale. to find out. Isn't it, yeah, I think this, wasn't, go ahead, Joe. Wasn't this month was the other one? Oh, was it this? Was that what it is? It back to back? Free, I think. Okay. Pretty sure. Yep. Damn. Yeah, I know um, someone from Dad's Getting Grounded. I want to say it was Damien. said it was really good. The other one, not this one. I'm not familiar with Chains of Olympus, yeah. but said the other one that was available last month was really good. So maybe this one will be as well. I can't remember if this is the PSP port or were both of them PSP ports. I, I just can. Oh, so Go, God of War Ghost of Sparta is the free game for the Vita this month, and it does say that it's a PSP slash PS Vita game. This month, or you mean May? Uh, sorry, May. It's still in May. the store because it hasn't cycled out, as I guess I should have said. I'm going uh, gotcha. there right now. <laughs> <clears throat> and for the Xbox, we have a, a few games as well. It looks like for the Xbox One, for the whole month of June, it is Goat Simulator. And then from June 16th through July 15th, it is Ubisoft's racing game, The Crew, for the Xbox 360. And, of course, these are backwards compatible, so you can play them on the one as well. It is uh, Super Meat Boy from June 1st through the 15th. And then XCOM Enemy Unknown from June 16th through the 30th. Uh, nothing, you know, on both systems that are really wowing me, but of course they're free, so I'll pick them up and just add them to the library. Um, but nothing really blowing me away. I haven't played Gone Home, so I'm excited to actually get a chance and doing it for free. Yeah, Gone Home is a good game. But, yeah, uh, I really like both of those PS3 games, actually. If I still had a PS3, I'd definitely be sinking time into them, even though I, I already own Echo Chrome digitally because that's the only way it was really ever offered, but... Now, let me ask you guys a question. Now, with these PS3 games, is anybody adding them to the library just in case a backwards compatibility comes out someday? No. No. Mm. So you've been, igno- you've been ignoring them the whole time if they're PS3. I never owned a PS3, so. Well, I understand that, but if it's backwards compatibility, that would be a, uh, you know, a mute point at that. I, just I don't see them doing backwards compatibility. There's just too much of a difference between the PS3 with that, whatever the architecture they used to use and whatnot. I don't see it coming yep. to uh, PS4 and, or them uh, working on that. Okay, uh, fair enough. I always add everything into my store. Or yeah, you might as well, right? Just an extra couple clicks. Yeah, like what if I wound up with a, a free Vita or a, I, I found like a $20 PS3 while I was at yard sales or something, you know? Yeah. Because yep. Better safe than sorry. Exactly. Um, that's pretty much it for the news I wanted to talk about right off the top. So let's get into the uh, community question of the week which was, if rumors are true about the iterative consoles being more powerful, will you upgrade upon release? Let's go around the room before we uh, read what the community had to say. Jay, what is your feeling on this? Um, your, I should say, what is your official feeling on this this week? Because I know we've talked about it at nauseum on uh, you know past episodes, but where are you feeling this week? I mean, it's going to change, but I'm, I'm at a point where if it's not a significant upgrade, I'm not going to go for it. Like if it's just a slim with a two terabyte, there's, there's no sense. I mean, you can plug it in for for the Xbox. It doesn't matter in that way. For the PlayStation, I, I can put a two terabyte in mine. I just have not done it yet for the PS4. And, um, you know, so for either way, it'd have to be a significant upgrade, which I think it, that we will see that, but um, not till next year. And at that point in time, um, it depends on whether they offer a, a, 
an upgrade path? You know, do they give you a trade in on your old console, or do you just have to go out and uh, you know kind of uh, try to do a trade in through GameStop or something? And pick up the new one, but I am interested in a more powerful console because, like, load times for Witcher right now are killing me. Other than that, the, the game's great, but the, the load times, I mean, you die, man. Die. Go make a sandwich, go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just if you go on the rumors, that stuff isn't supposed to go away. I mean, I know you, you said before that they got time to change that, but at least on paper, what's being floated out there is the load times might even increase a little, so... I, I think that's just somebody looking at the specs. I don't think they're, they're dumb enough to do that. What about yourself, Joe? If there's a, a good enough incentive to do it, uh, I would totally be down. Either, I mean, even if there's not that much of an incentive, but there's a like a, a path where they'll help you with the upgrade if you trade in your old system, then I'm totally down. Mm-hmm. Um but, I mean, honestly, right now, I haven't even really touched my PS4 since I built my computer. Just mm-hmm. because all the games on there, I don't really have, like, any hop-in and hop-out games. And everything yep. that I have on my PC, I can just hop in for just a couple of minutes, get one or two rounds in, and then leave. You know, I'm pretty much at the point now where, I, of course, I want to see specs. Um, but I think, like, one of the persons uh, will read the community. I feel like, you know, uh, one person says, I need to experience the new tech right away. I sort of have that uh, that feeling, you know, got to be the day one adopter, uh, especially on consoles. So I'm feeling that tug. But at the same sense, I do want to see the specs. I want to see if it's going to be a significant improvement or if it's just going to be slight. And then I'll go from there. I think if you put a gun to my head today, will I upgrade? Yes, I will. Uh, but I will not be upgrading in the quantities like I have in the past, my kids don't need to be playing uh, Xbox 1.2. So if I get the next iteration of the PS4 or the Xbox One, it will just be one this time around. Uh, there's still plenty of value for the kids to play the current generation right now. Yeah. So I will not be not be buying them in bulk. Yeah, and I think that fits because as they're both saying that it's not supposed to be an upgrade where you're going to have games that aren't playable on both consoles. They're supposed to be able to play the uh, the newer, the older games on the new console, and the new console those games have to be playable on the on the old one too. So I mean, for you, right. what's the what's the sense in upgrading big time? Sure. I just like said yeah. if if it's going to give me faster load times, play a little bit, kind of kind of like what the uh, Xbox One backwards compatible is now. I think those 360 games play a little bit better on the on the one. Yep. Um, you know, it all remains to be seen. You know, for me, you know, I always feel like I want to get my hands on the tech. Very curious to see, yeah. you know, what, what the end result will be there. It's curious. We're going to read what the community had to say. But before I get into it, I'm going to say this. If I had to put a percentage on what the responses were, I'm going to say it's about 90% are anti this upgrade path and maybe 10% are all for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could even be worse than that. I even think now, thinking about it, maybe just one or two people are for this iter of consoles. I wonder what type of research Sony and Microsoft have done on this, because even just our small sample size here, it's just a lot of people are are just not for it. And now, of course, the new thing comes out, and a game comes out for it, and it blows people away. Then opinions can be swayed. But I really think if they combine this um, iter of console along with a game that's you know only available on Xbox 1.2 or only available on the PS4 Neo, I think they could really har- harm themselves in the long run by uh, segregating people onto the new one versus the old one. Yeah. But let's get into some of these uh, responses, shall we? I'll go first. Uh, Chris Lewis at Let's Go Mountaineers says, no, no, no. So that's pretty clear. Um, Catwood, Corey Atwood, of course, our co-host. He says, fuck no. Get your goddamn PC model out of my console gaming. Not having to upgrade is the reason I prefer consoles. I'm sensing a theme here. Uh, Papa Lasagna. I assume this is uh, his new name based off of something from uh, Dad's Getting Grounded this week because he seems to change it depending on what they say. He says, uh, this of course is Detroit Slasher of Open Forum Radio Podcast. He says, not on release. I'll wait till I hear why. If it's worth it, yes, but it has to be worth it, i.e. something I don't 
I guess, uh, get currently. Let's see, show enough of Gamer Husbands Radio. If they show Horizon Zero Dawn or the next God of War in Super the Greatest mode, I'll be first in line to pre-order. Otherwise, not a fan of the iterative console model, feeling there's a GTX 1080-powered PC in my future. This is a theme we'll hear more and more as we read these. Uh, Alex, Sky Kiddo of the 40 cast. Probably not upon release. I'll wait and see how it performs. And Nick, Games on the Mind, otherwise known as uh, Lucky Stiff on Twitch, uh, he says, uh, yeah, anything is better than being stuck with the Xbox One. <laughs> and we have Albert Rustano, Aries underscore 0926. Absolutely not. I expect more than a few years out of a $500 console. Remember Sega 32X? Sean, Quicksilver 3355. Nope. Building a PC, I'm done with the console. Chase Langdon at Awakened Heathen. Well, I've been wanting a second PS4 for the bedroom, so maybe. Or get old model cheaper. Ben Shanier. Uh, trying to choose between trading in my Xbox One for the upgraded PS4 or a GTX 1070. Denny, a beer guy. Uh, a loose screw of Tap the Craft podcast. Uh, I'll wait until at least the second iteration of it all. I use the original 360 build through the whole generation, and I do consider those as iterative console release because a lot of people repurchased them elite and slim editions so did any of you buy up the elite or slim from the original 360 skew uh yes yes and yes um, yeah i pretty much um i had the white i still have the original a white one working yep i went out and bought i don't believe i ever bought an elite was elite the one with like that was when they first came out you could get the um the so base like the, model, which had no hard drive and had and had like five twelve memory in it, the very mm. first ones, and then they had, they had the elite, which you could get had a twenty gig hard drive and a and a chrome disc tray. Right. I have, so I have some form of slims, not the newest slim. Although I really like that blue slim, I always have my eye on that one. But I do have a um, black and and white slim with the sort of like chrome around the top. Yeah. Yeah. And I only upgraded because I ended up going in and getting uh, one of the um because I already had the hard drive, I'd purchased a 120 hard drive. I bought one of the um arcade editions that had like 4 gigabyte of memory in them. So mm-hmm. I I did do that, but uh you know, basically that was it because I originally uh got the Elite from the beginning and I had that one for it was actually under warranty for six years because of the extended warranty I got. So it only blew up once. Mm. They sent it in. They sent me back another one. And then I traded it in. That's enough on that. And we all know Joe did not have one. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and to finish up here, Double A Ron, Indio Techno, uh, otherwise known as Earn. Uh, I'll wait and see what's up. I might upgrade and give my son the Xbox One. And uh, Sean D. Evans, Ziontane of the OMG Hour and Gamers Unscripted. I agree. It's too soon to upgrade five to seven years is my upgrade window. My uh, rebuttal on that is I don't think you're going to see a seven to ten year uh, console life cycle anymore just because you can't keep up. Even when these consoles came out, they, were too, they weren't powerful enough. They were already behind because they were designed off a of tech that was earlier in the upgrades. I mean, look at what the 1070 uh, video card is doing compared to the 980 cards now. I mean, it's, it's you know, three times faster. So, mm. you know, I don't think you're going to see well, it. The thing is, those, those cards, though, are worth more than the console. So what are they putting in these consoles? I mean, someone's got to eat that cost. I mean, they're obviously not putting 1070s in these consoles, but what are they putting in there? What's the? I know it's something uh, specific for the console. It's not something you're actually going to want to buy. It's actually, if I believe, if I remember correctly, it's an AMD. Um, right. And what they do is, in AMD just announced a, a, a new card, too. But I haven't seen a lot, so I can't really speak on it, but the two of them are supposed to be as powerful as a 1080. Um, yeah, I mean, they're 199 Right, 200 bucks. So, in, so, I mean, that's that's... I mean, what do consoles cost now? Somewhere between two ninety nine and three fifty. But Microsoft and Sony won't pay that. You got to you got to remember, Microsoft and Sony are going to go to AMD and say, okay, we want this chip, and this is going to be a specially designed chip just for them. And they're going to say, okay, we're going to buy four million of these. What kind of deal are you going to give us? Yeah. You know, so they're they're paying you know a, a quarter or, or a third, you know, probably less than a quarter of of the price of what you would for for one of those, and they're just using the chip, so. I would be shocked if these new iterative consoles come out and they are at the same price that consoles are at right now. I would think they would be more expensive. I don't know. Yeah. 
It's hard. It may be maybe their release price. All right, uh, Joe, why don't you take us on out here with the rest? All right. Well, Jeremy of Dad's Getting Grounded says, "Nope. I'll wait until the even better ones come out in three years, or these next ones are half price like current well, current ones are now." Also, PC gaming's too expensive. Hashtag herp derp. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, PDX underscore geek, says, nope, build my first PC instead. And I was uh, actually giving him some advice via text just yesterday about that. Nice. Awesome. And he may uh, call me over to help him out because <laughs> he's never built before. Is, so, Is PDX some sort of uh, Portland thing? Uh, Portland Straight Edge? No, PDX <laughs> is uh, the name. It's what our airport is. And oh, everybody just calls Portland PDX. It's, yeah, and you do not want to mix that up with Portland, Maine, because the company I worked at before, the president came to visit, and guess where he flew into? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong side of the country, buddy. <laughs> yeah, no uh, MagnaFlow328 of Dad's Getting Grounded says, Maybe if the games take advantage of the extra power right away. Devious Mr. Matt of the 40Cast says, I'm not ready for new consoles already. I'll probably be out this round. Yeah, Matt's not paying that $20 upgrade fee. <laughs> <laughs> and then Glovebox, a.k.a. Glovebox of the 40Cast, says, I will definitely upgrade because I'm one who needs experience for myself. The newest, latest tech. So, yeah, day one adopter. Not surprising. That's my- that's my boy. I feel yeah. pretty much the same glove box. Yeah, I always have to resist that urge. I always really want it, but I, ha- I have to have that willpower. And then finally, Holy Goalie of a Game Hounds podcast says, Not on release, but if there's enough of an improvement beyond just a bigger hard drive, I would consider upgrading at some point. He just upgraded to a new PC. I believe it's coming this week. Yeah. It's getting an a- Alienware of some sort. Oh. Yeah, yeah he picked up uh, uh, an Asa Predator... Or it was it Asus or Asa or one of the two Predator monitor that's oh, got nice. the um, uh, the G Sync for the uh, Nvidia G Sync. Mm-hmm. Yep. Man, that's going to be a beast. Yeah. No, he got the. Um, Did he get one of the cool cases? Yes. Yeah. He got that case that you were the sort triangle of like you case. showing me. Yeah. Oh, I love that <laughs> the one that I sent you. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's such a good one. All right, Jay, what is our community question for next week? Um, let me scroll up here because I'm old and don't remember all these things, and I want to word it properly because it's really complicated. What are you most anticipating from E3 week? Now, do we want to tease? I know last week we had E3 expect you know predictions, and you, you know next week we'll I guess all answer this. And uh, but do we have anything to want to leave people with? For me, it's got to be the consoles. You know. Yeah. That's what that's what I'm most anticipating. Does anybody have anything different than the consoles? Because I have not played the game yet, <laughs> Red Dead Redemption. Uh, I turned on my console today, and Red Dead Redemption now, ha- or I don't know, maybe it had one from back when they uh, made it. It came out backwards compatible for like a week, and then they patched it back out. But it has a game hub on the one. Okay. So I'm anticipating uh, the announcement of Red Dead Redemption, and I think that if you pre-order or something, they're going to allow you to get um, kind of like what uh, Fallout did. They give you a code and backwards compatible. Okay. The Joe, what about yourself? Anything besides consoles or Red Dead? Uh, now that Nintendo said that they're not going to have anything about the NX there, I'm not really that into whatever the other consoles are going to be doing or the console manufacturers are going to be doing. So I don't know. I mean, I'll definitely be keeping my eye out and look, watching all the news and everything, but there's nothing specific that I'm, like, super stoked on. Now, are you a Spider-Man guy or no? I'm kind of in between. I was looking at some sites, and they had their predictions up, and one site predicted a new uh, Spider-Man game coming out. Yeah, I'd play it. Activision? <laughs> I didn't read through the whole thing. It's Activision. Is there, Sp- is, there, is there a new Spider-Man movie coming out at some point or not? Uh, well, they they brought Spider-Man into that Civil War movie, and uh, there has not been an, an, an official announcement of anything that's going to happen after that. But um, I think they worked into the deal that Marvel Studios would actually be able to help produce a Spider-Man movie, which would actually pull it out of the slump that it's been in with uh, with Sony being in charge of all the Spider-Man movies ever since 
Who knows when? Some good uh, trade waiters crossover talk there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so let's get into uh, what we've been playing. Uh, Joe, your list seems to be on the uh, smaller side, so why don't you go first? All right. So I played a little bit of Doom, probably about an hour, and uh, I blasted through the rest of my time uh, on Mars and met up with, uh, or I got into that one lady's office and everything and activated another portal and now I'm back in hell and I'm fighting the most ridiculous giant cyber demon guy. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. And then uh, I knew I wasn't going to, or I said I wasn't going to play Overwatch until I finished Doom, but that changed. Had to dip your toe in the pool. Well, yeah, so when I used to play Team Fortress 2, which I have a lot of hours in, it was always on one specific server with a really active community. I was an admin on the server, and everybody, it was like all talk, and it was basically like every night we all got on there just to unwind. And, uh, you know, we just bullshit and played Team Fortress 2. And we did that for years and years and years, every night for maybe two to three hours a night. And... uh You know, Overwatch is basically TF2 Jr., and I was scrolling through my Steam friends, and I saw that one of my buddies from that server had his name, his Steam name changed to his Blizzard ID, and it just said Overwatch after it. So I added him and hit him up, and then he's like, hey, a bunch of us from the Florf community are all playing Overwatch together, so I'm so glad that you hit me up. Let's all play. And that night, I popped in there, and I played with, uh, there was only three of them on, or no, two of them on at the time, but since then, I've added a few more, so now I have an actual uh, community of Overwatch friends. And how do you like the game now that it's out? Feel just like the beta? Or? Yeah, it feels a lot, I mean, just like the beta. They did, so I guess they're going to be doing weekly game modes, kind of like, you know, other games have been doing lately. Got to keep the interest where, where it's just a, a rotation of a specific game type. And this week, it's a game type where it's the two brothers, uh, Genji and, gosh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head all of a sudden, but the two ninja guys, basically. The guy with the bow, the bow and arrow, and then the guy with the shurikens who can run up walls. Mm-hmm. And uh, so those are the only two characters you can pick. So it's like 5v5 of just these two like weird projectile characters. And uh, it, it makes for some interesting gameplay. And it also forces me to play a character that I'm not comfortable with. So I've, I've figured out a couple things uh, along the way. And everybody is shitting their pants over this game. Um, <laughs> you know, it is so popular now that I've had to go into certain social media sites and mute the hashtag and stuff like that because <laughs> it's just getting too much. And now I wish other social media sites could just let you mute just a word. You know, some of these apps let you go in and type the word that you can mute. Some of them cannot. So Overwatch is becoming a dirty word in my house. It, it's oh. calming down a little bit. It's 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 not as, I mean, there's still a lot of people on there. But, yeah, this is a very popular game. Very popular game. And do we think that's because it's Blizzard and so many people respect their other games? Is that why? You know, Heroes of the Storm, Hearthstone, Diablo, etc. I believe it's a part of it. I believe that's a big part of it. That, I mean, personally for me, that has, like, no factor whatsoever because the only other blizzard game i've ever played was diablo 3 and my old computer couldn't really handle it so i probably only played about an hour of it played a little bit of diablo 2 back in the day but i mean i've never given a care about really any of the other stuff i kind of threw up heroes of the storm for um a couple hot little weeks there but i mean honestly i'm I'm certainly not a blizzard fanboy it's just you know this is just my style of game and uh, Team Fortress 2, eventually it started to get dated, and so this kind of iterates on, on that tried-and-true formula and gives me something that I like with a fresh new paint job. Cool. Nice. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely very popular. That's no doubt about it. Uh, anything else to add on those games, Joe? No, that's it. That's all of it. All right. Uh, Jay, how about yourself? Uh, just... As I mentioned, because I only played it for a little bit, but Goat Simulator, uh, it's back, you know, it's uh, free with the uh, games of gold. It's definitely worth picking up. It's uh, a very entertaining and uh, cartoonish, I guess I would call it. It's along them lines. What's the um, Surgeon Simulator? I, I guess that's probably the only other game that's probably in its similar type gen- genre, although it's, the gameplay is different. But they're like, it's a game that's based off of uh, It's Broken. But, um, I sat around and played that today. My granddaughter loves watching that one, so I found another one I can pop in and play with her around, and she gets a kick out of it. Um, I played a very little bit of Doom, um, so I really haven't progressed too much further. Still really enjoying it. However, 
uh, my favorite game of all time, uh, The Witcher 3. Blood and Wine is out, so I have been playing that. And uh, in the beginning, I was uh, kind of frustrated. It, you've been playing this a little bit, right, Mike? Yes, I did. I only played, um, I think probably played maybe the first, you know, half hour or so, so uh, not too much. But the uh, new UI that they've overlaid over it, holy shit, is that, what an improvement. I mean, the game's been out a year, but they're still improving it. Yeah, not only the UI, but they've also done some texture updates. Oh, yeah. Some some stuff with the animation of uh, the characters and music and sound effects. So it, it almost feels like a brand new game, yeah. for sure. I, mean, they, I wish, you know, my only complaint is I wish when you went into the UI there was an option like, I get it, this stuff is new, don't show me any more tooltips, because they just keep coming at you with every chance, yeah, and I couldn't find a way to skip all those. Yeah, I'm wondering if there is a setting in there. Um, I, I haven't seen it, don't know where it is, if there is one. But there is one setting that you don't want to do, because of, as Mike said, there was a lot of texture for video it, de- it definitely looks a little crisper it seems like the draw distances are a little better now when you see enemy upscaling in the gameplay settings and you think that that's gonna um you know make a better looking enemy don't do that <laughs> it what that does is it it makes some people like i think mike was one of the ones that had complained that he got to a point where he could just walk through and kill anything in pretty much one swipe was that correct there at one point yeah, yeah. It's at the end of the game. Yeah. yeah. So, Hot knife through butter. Yeah. You can turn this on, enemy upscaling, and what it does is it upscales the enemies to your level. Uh, so, like, if you go into a level 33 quest and you're level 39 like or 38 like I was, the enemies were 40 to 43, and I was getting my ass handed to me. Also, because I had 20 points that I had not put into my uh, mutagens and all that stuff, so that didn't help either. But I was getting my ass handed to me, and I couldn't figure out why, so then I went back in and turned that enemy upscaling off, and uh, wow, what a difference. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, I literally at one point was not doing damage to some of the characters, because uh, I think with Witcher, it was it's very similar to some of the other games. If you're like two levels below something, it, it will kick your ass pretty hard, unless you really got everything, all your points um, put into your into your different skills and stuff properly. I found that first boss to be difficult. Yeah, I after I went back in and changed some things around, um, I went in and just wiped the floor with him. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, while I went in and assigned my points and uh, changed some of my mutagen skills, um, put some other ones in. Uh, like there's one that I put in. If it's in the brown squares, and if you put those in, uh, they're like permanent upgrades that are there all the time if you use them. And one of them is like if you're eating food, it heals you or or, or boosts your stamp, not your stamina, but your health for 20 minutes. So uh, I put that one in. Man, did that make a huge difference? And the other one was, I think, something that um, made it so I didn't receive as much damage. So, and like I said, that one's, those two were on all the time. So once I put those in, man, it made a huge difference. I really like the way the inventory and everything, this new UI does make it easier to use because they've uh, broken it down into more categories now, so it's easier to find stuff where before you'd just scrolling through them like oh, where's this where's that oh my god i can't find this so uh there's and like mike said there's uh tool tips that come up because they it is a drastic overhaul they do give you the tool tips and they some of them do get irritating but most of them are, are pretty good because of the change and what i found too was all i need was that quick tool tip to pop up read it use it once and i got it it, it was very intuitive so it wasn't like a major change you go in and it's like oh my god i don't even know how to play this game anymore you go in boom I picked it right up real quick, and that's saying a lot for me. Really enjoying the game. Again, uh, my favorite game of all time. They just are making it better. And um, I am playing the story now. I'm a little ways in, not too far, but I, I am very much enjoying it. So uh, I recommend it if you have not played it. So Yeah, I've only played up to that first boss, beat him, and then turned it off. Yeah, and then I've gone back and done some of the... Uh, doing some cleanup on secondary quests that I had, so I'm enjoying it. Although, I did run into an issue where I could not get on my horse, so. <laughs> and then I went back in, I saved, reloaded, didn't come back, I tried that two or three times because that was one of the things that they had said to try, and I went back and uh, booted it up this morning and started playing, and there was Roach. But they've added a lot with this new DLC, too. Uh, there's more, um, you've got another 
upgrade tree for your all your armors and stuff. There's uh, I can't remember what they call it now, but it's, it's it's another level that you can upgrade the the armor to. And uh, I believe there's weapons and, and new mutagens and um, a ton of upgrades. So cool. Well, worth playing. well I'm looking forward to um, diving into that you know head first this week. But first, I need to finish Uncharted Four, and I am pretty much at the end. I think there's another chapter or two to go. Right before we started tonight, I got to uh, Chapter 20, so uh, enjoying it, really liking the story and how that is uh, shaping up. You know, I wish we could have more stories of, uh, you know, like this, so that would be cool. How many hours would you say you've got in this now? Mm, if I guess, I would have to say somewhere probably between 17 and 20. Jeez. Oh, st- There's a, you know... You sent me a text earlier in the week saying, you know, you were struggling in some games where, you know, six to eight enemies were taking you out and yeah. needed needed to do some farming of XP and things like that. I will say this about Uncharted. Um, there isn't a whole lot of gunplay in this game, but there is certainly sometimes you will be in a firefight and they throw a lot of enemies at you. So there is not a, like just opportunities to go off and, and snipe guys. Um, you know, maybe every once in a while, but for the most part, you know, you have guys that are running up uh, against you and just, you know, maybe pistols, some other guys with AKs, other guys with grenade launchers, and then you got, you know, the heavy duty armor guys with, you know, like the Gatling guns. So there's just a lot of enemies coming at you and you got to be constantly moving, constantly using the circle button to dodge because then the snipers come at you with the, with the laser pointer. So it gets pretty uh, hectic. So just be aware of that. If you're thinking of picking up the game, you will run into situations where it's just you against a whole shitload of people. I could see this being a controller tracker game for you at times. <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of puzzle elements to this game. There's a lot of, you know, you just got to go off and, and try to find your way and hopefully not get lost. You know, I try to I try to not wander off too much. I know you can wander off and get the, you know, the the hidden treasures and things like that. I'm getting as them as they come or something obvious, but there is um there's a lot that could go wrong in this game if if you just try to go off and on tangents and just go explore. But it's a beautiful looking game. As you get longer in the game, I notice more and more of them relying on um, their experience with The Last of Us, with those, you know, sort of old buildings with the uh, lush environments inside, you know, all the uh, overgrown, you know, uh, weeds coming through the buildings. There's a lot more of that as this game progresses. It looks it looks phenomenal. So, But just the story, the, um, I'm not sure how much you guys know of the story, but the lore um, as you get into this, it's just unbelievable. Really, it really interests me. And there's one particular scene where you walk into this one room where there's um, some sort of dinner must have taken place, and that just blew me away. Yeah, I have a is... collection, so I I won't be yeah. playing this for a while. Yeah, um, it, it, this story is really you know, shaping up nicely. I want to see uh, how it concludes here, and then I'll give my final impressions. But I'm very happy with it. Uh, last week I mentioned Doom that I was very close to the end, so I beat that over the week. Nice. I finished that finish that up you know so so ending certainly I throw a lot of stuff at you joe um you said you were at some sort of a uh, big fight right now first of many let's leave it at that uh. and uh so yeah i mean certainly the way it was left typical video game style i believe so but enjoyable to play right up to the end as far as yes. gameplay goes. i didn't have you know I didn't have, it didn't leave me with a bad taste or anything like that i just like i mentioned they could have put these you know for lack of better term boss battles all back to back and they could have wrapped it up a lot quicker but they didn't they, they spaced them out with more and more enemies. But they keep chucking new enemies at you continually through the entire thing right to the end, right? You keep seeing new well, stuff? If you consider if you consider bosses new enemies, yes. Okay. But otherwise, no. All right. And then other than that, I've been playing this game called Neon Chrome on the PC. I got this from the uh, Ten Tons Limited guys. My favorite. Yep. This is a cyberpunk top-down twin-stick shooter. It's got some roguelite oh, elements. Oh, shit. Oh. So, you know, I'm not super huge on the roguelite games, but I really like this game. A lot of, you know, cool weapons and, you know, look, blow up a lot of stuff. You know, it's just about, you know, playing it over and over again and trying to get better. So it's a more uh, futuristic hotline Miami, maybe. You know what I mean? It's not as punishing and there's more upgrade paths and things like that. But it's got a little bit of that flair and style to it. And let's see what else. I already mentioned The Witcher 3. And last thing, I've been playing this game on my phone called Nonstop Night. It is a sort of Diablo, World of Warcraft, you know, dungeon, uh, loot, loot dungeon type game. And it does all the um, hacking and slashing for you. You just have certain power-ups, like a spin move, a stomp. And so you um, use those. There's also, a, um, you can, you know... 
uh, double your character, sort of like you know an invisible character that can you know join you as well. And it is kind of, you know it's I guess somewhat of a clicker, somewhat of an RPG action dungeon crawler all built into one. Just came out on iOS and the uh, Android, so I've been leveling up an ungodly amount of hours in that. I think I'm on uh, level eight right now. You can ascend which gives you bigger rewards that you can keep, but you lose all your money and, and, you know, some of your armor and weapons and things like that. So if you're looking for something to play and you got a, uh, you know, itch that needs to be scratched as far as looting, check that one out. Pretty good, huh? Yeah, I like it. But that kind of, I was kind of curious. I've never really run into a game kind of in that genre on iOS that I've enjoyed. So I may have to check yeah, it out. Check it out. Nonstop night. Is it free or what? What's the cost on that? Um, it was free for me. I'm not sure if it was free for everybody else. I think it is free. And there's also, you know, it's got some things in it. You can microtransactions. And also, like, hey, we're going to give you this armor, but you got to watch this 10, 10 to 15 minute, uh, excuse me, 10 to 15 second video. So for some other game that they might be putting out, you can watch the video and then you get back and you get the armor and stuff like that. Yeah. Angry Birds does that. It's a, it's a you know, it's a decent game to play if, you know. You're somewhere and you you got a gaming itch and you can't really you know bust out the console. It's not bad. Nice. But let's move on to our Dillagaff segment here. So the Dillagaff this week is going to be around Skylanders Imaginators. That was announced uh, this week. This is the sixth version of Skylanders, so I'll read you a little bit about the game. The next Skylanders is a game that will allow players to make their own heroes and store those digital creations in a plastic crystal. Skylanders Imaginators is due out October 16th, will be the sixth title in the franchise. This year's big change is the ability for players to create their own in-game Skylanders. Players place a creation crystal on the game's portal to start the process of making their own character, and then a player works their way through a series of decisions to customize the Skylanders Imaginators that they are creating. And there's supposed to be, you know, unlimited possibilities. Of course, you play through the game and you will unlock things to customize your characters. Uh, they are also including a new slate of toys called the Senseis. And these will include 20 new characters and 11 former vill- villains. Each is a master of one of the ten battle classes. These toys will be the only in-game characters who can unleash a new special Sky Chi super move. The Sensei can also unlock unique Imaginator weapons that increase the player-made character's level caps and give them access to special areas in the game. They also unlock new special techniques for Imaginators of the same class. So that's enough of that. Um, uh, yeah, I need so, a coffee. <laughs> so for that, I would say the amount of fucks that I give about the new Skylanders is probably somewhere between five and six fucks. So I have purchased all the other um, iterations of the game. The last one was not so hot, and Vicarious Visions created the last one. And if you talk to people with Skylanders, much like Call of Duty and funny, it's the same publisher, Activision. It depends on who the developer is if the series is go- if the next game is going to be any good. So, Toys for Bob is putting this one out, and they are known to be the better developer yes. of Skylanders uh, games. So that's the only reason my fucks goes up a little bit, because otherwise I have said to my wife and I've said to my kids, we're all done. They don't play them anymore at this point. I'm just getting them for myself, and I'm playing, and. Um, so I think I am out of the uh, Skylanders business. So my fucks are pretty low, but I imagine they are probably higher than you, Jay. Ah, uh, yeah, my, my fucks are zero. I think I got the second or third one. And I only have about maybe eight or ten Skylanders, and I just toys to life. I'm just I picked up uh, Lego Dimensions. I'm not playing that either, and uh, just not something that interests me in the least anymore. Uh, just the amount of money you're going to spend on toys, I give no fucks. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> look what happened to Mad Cats uh, from uh, trying to or from producing too much plastic. They're going out of business. So, uh, yeah, I'm out. All right. Joe, how about yourself? I know you picked up some um, Skylanders for your uh, son yeah. recently, right? Yeah. And uh, and he enjoyed those, correct? 
That's correct, but uh, I still give zero fucks. <laughs> uh, the only reason we got those is because they were at my uh, my wife's old uh, store that she worked at, which is like a secondhand kids store. And so we were able to get, like, was it three of the games? And then, you know, like 60 or 70 of the Skylanders figures. And we were able to get them all for like 20 bucks or something like that. And so, wow. you know, we were like, yeah, sure, why not? We'll let those... Check it out. He might like it. 20 bucks is a good buying price. I'm sure we can just sell all the figures if and recoup our money and then some if he doesn't like it. And then, uh, you know, for a second, I was like, eh, maybe we should get him superchargers. But that fell through immediately after, too, because mm-hmm. I looked Go. at the price of what current figures go for. And I'm like, oh, that's how they get you, huh? I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah, so... Yeah. And I, I think for me also, not to ask to any of Thunder here, I just think the quality of the figures last time around uh, when compared to the Infinity figures was uh, nowhere close. You know, you can tell someone was painting those figures rather than some sort of precise machine. And, you know, these particular ones, maybe they didn't have the best painters <laughs> because <laughs> lines were not as uh, crisp and clean as they should have been. Yep, I th- believe that I am out of the toys for... Um, life business myself run away run away well let's get into some of the news gentlemen looks like someone a youtube personality leaked uh the watchdogs 2 is coming out oops and this this will be coming to the ubisoft uh e3 presentation alongside for honor and ghost recon wildlands so i think really not a shock because there was no assassin's creed game you know they had to be working on something else so it is watchdogs 2 and that game maybe didn't fare so well um, with reviews and people playing it, but it certainly sold a shitload. It broke all sorts of records when that game came out. I know. I got duped. Yep. Fuck that <laughs> game. All right, so you picked it up and did not like it? I thought that game was the hugest steaming pile of horse shit. Nice. <laughs> but I got it. <laughs> And uh, so the game is supposed to be coming out sometime before the end of April of 2017. Moving on to some other news, we have uh, Jay just hinted at this. Mad Cat reports $11 million loss following a bad deal for Rock Band 4. Now, Jay, I will let you know that my uh, Gamma Sutra page is only loading the header and the uh, UI in the side, so I do not have the meat of the story, as they say. It loads very slowly. Um but basically what happened is they produced too many plastic uh, instruments, um, and uh, it cost them too much, and they did not sell. So they uh, they threw all their chips in, and uh, they didn't get the numbers they needed. So they're uh, basically, I think they're, there we go, it just put, come up for me. They got, sell the remaining 8.3 million Rock Band 4 inventory as part of a 120-day wind-down period. So basically I have to sell off $8.3 million of Rock Band for inventory. Then they also 6.8 million in charges related to Rock Band 4 for inventory write downs, material authorizations, and price reductions with retailers to try to get it out, some of the money back. So basically, they, like I said, they produced too much and it didn't sell. Mm-hmm. So. Now, didn't Harmonix fire them and switch over to Fender? Not Fender. They, they went over to a company that used to, I can't remember the name of the company. PDP. PDP, yeah, which used to be, I can't remember what they were now. Yeah, Mad Cat, because Mad Cat uh, was the distributor for it. Uh, publisher, sorry. The publisher, and they also made guitars and stuff, and the drums and all that stuff. And uh, they actually wanted Mad Cats to retool the equipment. They're like, no, we... We've already got too much money into this. So they, they took it hard on this one. Mad Cats, I mean, this could kill them. Took it on the chin. Yeah, they, so they'll to have to pull a Trump and uh, go bankrupt. Um, next, we have some Best Buy news. It looks like they are going to be um, changing a little bit how they do Gamers Club Unlocked. It's supposed to be uh, a little worse this year, but still better than Amazon Prime, if you believe Wario64 on Twitter. Uh, you're still going to be getting a 20% discount off new physical video games, which excludes pre-owned video game software and digital gaming. The benefit no longer will be able to combine with promotions advertised in Best Buy's Thanksgiving Day physical ad or expanded digital ad. Uh, limit three copies of each title per platform per year per member. Valid on in-stock items only, no rain checks, no dealers. So basically I think they put the the dealer stuff in there and then the benefits so that it's not stacked on top of sales that they already have, basically. Well, just the Black Friday. It's not talking about sales. Right. 
during the year, but just the Black Friday yeah, stuff. Basically, yeah. So it's only so it's only worse for really a weekend and then it's pretty much business as usual. Yep. Now last week we talked about how the uh PS4 version of Far Harbor DLC, which is for Fallout 4, is not faring so well on uh Sony's platform. Nope. And they have come out with a way to fix this. Basically, if you have the game uh, the DLC already downloaded. You want to delete it and then re-download it. Oops. What they're saying... Go ahead. I said, oops. I, that's that's kind of a big one where they had the... the uh, if people aren't familiar, the uh, fog and the lighting from the fog was causing um, frame rate to dip into the teens. That's what we mentioned last week. So basically, um, it's telling you to re-download it. You know, of course, make sure Fallout's not running. Close the application... You can go to your related items and look at your add-ons and see if it's downloaded or not. But basically, you want to re-download it. Now, the more and more I read about Fallout uh, Far Harbor DLC, I might not want to play this because the worst part of Fallout 4 for me was those stinking friggin' crabs um, and whatever. I forget what the name, what they're actually called. But those things just creeped me out, skeeved me out so much. <laughs> yeah, you got to shoot them in the face. Oh, I might you hit them in the it. shell, it doesn't do much. <laughs> Yeah, the way they sort of like saunter up to you is just so creepy. Uh, I might not. And play you can hear the skittering as they just oh, <laughs> nasty, yeah. nasty, nasty stuff. So you didn't like them, huh? Oh, I did not. I loved them because they were such a challenge. Because you had to hit them in the face uh, to get a, a critical shot. I mean, you could kill them with uh, you know some of the bigger stuff from the back, but not most of the time. You had to go right from the front. Uh, now, I got to one place in, in the regular game recently where it was very foggy and you're on the water and some other nasty creatures came out of the water that I've never seen before. And those dudes were owning me left and right. Oh, and of, course, oh, um, of course, because the other the other creepy crabs were coming out of the ground too. Yeah. So I was getting gang raped by these creepy creatures. Yeah. Never again. <laughs> was it the, was the Myler Queens? Uh, no, it wasn't the Queens. It was some other thing. It was out by like some sort of boat. You went out in the boat, and then it just came up and like surprised you. And there was like a whole bunch of them. So what you're saying is seafood yeah. is disgusting. Um, yeah, seafood is the worst. <laughs> Especially anything that's a crustacean, because it's like eating a cockroach of the sea. <laughs> Fine, you want you like lobsters, you're eating cockroaches. Good for you. Mm, sea cockroaches mm, with yeah. butter. Scum, nasty, <laughs> nasty. <laughs> um, let's move on before Jay uh, starts drooling on the show. Too late. Uh, Share Factory for PlayStation has got a big update. Now, I will admit that I have never used Share Factory, but these updates uh, do make it sound rather appealing. One of the biggest changes to Share Factory is the introduction of Track 2, which gives you the ability to add a second gameplay video from your capture gallery to your project. This means your gameplay videos can use various picture-in-picture layouts for side-by-side gameplay video playback with the ability to add effects. Other features in this update include text layers can now rotate, two new music tracks, 15 new filter effects, video commentary clips are now saved to the capture gallery for easier access as well as reuse in multiple projects, trim lock feature making it easier to trim clips while not altering the overall length of your project and lastly they're also increasing the video export time limit to 60 minutes man so this sounds very robust as they would say can you upload these to youtube or yes nice i'll have to check that out yeah that's uh i mean geez you can do quick looks gameplay and stuff with that Yep. Uh, last two items here. The Xbox One is now $50 off until June 13th. Some sites were uh, saying that this was a permanent price drop, and maybe it will be uh, <laughs> once, once E3 comes. But for now, um, all Xbox One consoles are $50 off, and that, again, is until the day of their E3 press conference, which is June 13th. And the last bit of news here is that APB Reloaded has stealthily snuck on to the Xbox One. What the hell is so, that? So APB Reloaded is an MMO game. I believe this was out on uh, PC for a while, like, and then it got um, canned. It's like Cops and Robbers, isn't it? Right, yeah. So it made its uh, console debut just a few days ago. It's free to download, requires Xbox Live Gold. Players can purchase in-game currency, which can be spent on the game's extensive customization features in bundles that range from $4.99 to $199.99. In APB Reloaded, players choose to align themselves with either the Enforcers, tasked with keeping the peace in Sanparo, or the Criminals, 
who partake in robberies, vandalism, and other bad behavior. Uh, this game was originally available on Windows PC since 2011, and it looks like it's some sort of uh, spin-off of uh, GTA, right? Poor Man's GTA with MMO in it? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. Would you pay $200 for uh, a downloadable bundle? No, but some people pay an ungodly amount for Gears, uh, you know, fluorescent, you know, Lancer skin. So who am no, I that's to judge? twenty bucks. That's twenty bucks. No, if you could get all of them, then when Gears Three came out, Giant Bomb or someone did a a thing of how much it would cost you to get all of them. When Cliffy B was still doing them, they yeah. put out so many. Yeah, I used to. I I had the uh, one that they gave you all like of them. That. It was like forty bucks or something like that. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe um after a couple months it went down, but when they originally came out, they were not all at forty. No. Uh, but this one has bundles that range from four ninety nine to one ninety nine ninety nine. Holy shit! Yeah, I think that's pretty standard for these type of games. I yeah. think you can drop that type of coin in um, Smite and stuff like that. Oh, totally! I'm pretty pretty positive that's accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe so. That's how it's they just, they succeed is them whales. Yep. Just not used to seeing it, you know, because we don't <laughs> do this stuff. We don't play these things like that. But yeah, it very much is. I mean, you look at the picture in here, and the cop's got a thing on the on the on the back of his pants that looks like the gta kind of the fancy logos they put on the pants and stuff like that well that's uh all i really had this week a little bit of a short show without Corey and his opinions and of course uh no hot seat this week when he is back uh the hot seat will return as we have uh joe's friend ben charnier uh who's willing to jump in the hot seat yeah so, look, so looking forward to that we'll keep you uh posted when that will return we also got some other new segments that we're going to cook up uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, I will go first with some plugs or shout-outs. Of course, um, go listen to the newest edition of the 40 cast. My sides are still hurting, and my brain is still blown away with the guest that we had this week. We were so fortunate to get this person on. And go listen to the latest edition of the 40 cast for that. A uh, new episode of Dad's Getting Grounded is out. Congratulations to those guys on reaching year three of the podcast. Yes. My plug, or It Smells Like New Plastic of the Week, is my, I bought myself a Lazy Boy office chair. Ooh. And it, and it is comfortable, and it is about, I don't know, three or $400 cheaper than a DX Racer or a, uh, what's that, Metatronics, or what was they called? Need the Need for Seat, seat yeah. Yeah. So that is my uh, new toy of the week. Anybody else want to go? Keep an eye out for... The Trade Waiters podcast, we're going to be getting back out this week. Uh, we were going to do it this last week, but my uh, my buddy Sean had his baby, so got pushed back another week. We're going to talk about Hellboy, and it's going to be great. Nice. Awesome. And without you, Jay? Uh, just shout out to you guys for uh, coming on doing the podcast here. Uh, we're missing Corey. Um, shout out to him. And uh, shout out to 40 Cast, uh, um, Everyday Gamers, uh Dad's getting grounded, uh, and Radcast, and numerous others that I listen to at work that help me stay maybe almost sane. So uh, we have that. So thank you guys for that. And uh, I really don't have any other plugs this week. So uh. I saw some um, pictures yesterday of uh, Denny from Tap the Craft and uh, Bill Vlad's Hammer from uh, Open Form Radio out. Uh, hanging out with each other. I think uh, Denny was in from uh, Idaho into the uh, Pennsylvania area. So they went out and did a, a pub crawl yesterday and had lots of good food and beer. So that was cool to see on Twitter. A little jealous, fellas. That's nice. So, yeah, the open forum uh, radio, the OFR latest edition was, was a good one. So check that out as yeah, well. Yeah, OFR yeah, is a good one, yeah. Cool. Um, so, Jay, why don't you end this? Uh, until next time, same beta time, same beta channel, maybe not all of the hosts or co hosts. See ya! Oh, that's the stuff right there.